For decades, world powers have been nervous about two nuclear-armed neighbors, pitted against each other across one of the world's most militarized borders. The threat of a full-blown war between the two military powers has always been real and is fraught with the possibility of escalation to a nuclear conflict. Throughout their turbulent history, India and Pakistan have harbored mistrust for one another. The rivalry of the two nations has been marked by sporadic attempts at peace that often fizzled out with a single stray event of terror strike, mostly in Jammu and Kashmir. While India has clear superiority on conventional hardware, nuclear warheads even out the battlefield though technological advances could be India's trump card. Pakistan, on the other hand, is beginning to enjoy superiority in drone warfare, owing to RPVs provided by China, including the Wing Lung and RPVs obtained from Iran and Turkey. The RPVs which means remotely piloted vehicle, is an unmanned vehicle capable of being controlled from a distant location through a communication link. China also offered to provide Pakistan its SLC-18 satellite monitoring system so that Pakistan could keep an eye on Indian satellites. This radar allows relatively economical ground-based monitoring of space targets, as well as situational awareness capabilities against low-orbiting satellites to balance the fighting posture. The huge advantage is that it comes at a very cheap price. China is Pakistan's largest military exporter, supplying the country with aircraft, missiles, submarines, UAVs and other weapons. And, Pakistan is making major investments in UAVs. This field has experienced significant advancements in recent years. Pakistan earned the distinction of being the fourth country in the world, after the US, UK and Israel, to have successfully deployed an unmanned combat aerial vehicle in an active operation in 2015 to eliminate TTP. Pakistan already operates many surveillance UAVs, and the attack on India's Jammu airbase marked the first instance of drones being used to target military installations in India. This has benefited both the Pakistan Army and the Pakistan Navy. Why UAVs? The best thing about UAVs is that, they are unmanned. When you put a human in a machine, it loses design and operational flexibility. Furthermore, unmanned systems are ideally suited for long-duration missions, with heavily guarded targets, which are more dangerous for manned missions. For example, Russia is using Iranian drones, that are launched from a range of 1,000 kilometers and each drone carries a payload of 40 kilograms of explosives. Their accuracy is impressive, within 10 meters of a target. The range of Iranian drones reaches 1,000 kilometers, and they also have drones with a range of 2,000 kilometers. In the war on Ukraine, these suicide drones are a game changer and have changed the direction of the war in Russia's favor after its army suffered severe defeats during the recent months of fighting. These drones are damaging fuel reserves, food warehouses and government institutions, and their plan is to destroy dams, so that the water stored in them will flood Ukrainian cities and villages. Worryingly, all of the features of this sort of drone can be quickly improved, and there is no question that this will be the case. A similar drone carrying a weight of 200 kg is likely to enter service soon, according to sources. And there are also stealth drones that are difficult to locate, as well as others in various phases of development. Countries with less defense spending can boost air power by investing more in drones rather than expensive human combat aircraft. As technology advances, low cost drones will take to the skies and seas. Small and medium combat UAVs, in large numbers, provide a cost-effective boost to the country's air capabilities on the tactical front lines with limited escalation. The challenges of facing and defeating drone attacks are many. Drones of this type are very simple in terms of their structure, so they are very cheap in terms of their production and procurement costs. Once they are launched, the drones have no contact with the launchers and their flight to the destination cannot be disrupted. The drones fly at a low altitude, day or night, and are difficult to locate. The production capacity of the Iranian drone industry is many thousands per year. In fact, the purchase price of one F-35 fighter jet can buy about 4,000 drones. In Ukraine, Iranian drone technology is accumulating a lot of knowledge and expertise, the techniques that might bring Ukraine to its knees could be extended into other nations' borders too. India must learn from the Iranian-Russian drone war and create a reaction fast and efficiently to repel this menace.
To counteract this, anti-aircraft rapid-firing weapons that are radar and computer-operated, whose operation requires very limited manpower. This has already been developed and so far, proven to be very effective in perimeter defenses of up to 4 kilometers away. Is India taking any action against Pakistan's use of rogue drones? India's military is being modernized at a rapid pace as it strives for self-sufficiency and indigenization. This has been accomplished via off-the-shelf buying, indigenous spares production, and other measures. However, serious questions remain about the Indian military's capabilities when it comes counter-rogue drone threats from Pakistan. These drones are dangerous, so the government has been looking for ways to deal with them. Recent events, like the deadly drone attack on Saudi Arabia's largest oil company and the dropping of weapons by UAVs in Punjab from across the India-Pakistan border, have only pushed the security agencies to come up with a plan to stop the drones. Now, these agencies are looking at specific ways to stop drones, such as Sky Fence, Drone Gun, Drone Catcher, and Skywall 100, in order to catch and stop dangerous and suspicious remote-controlled aerial platforms. The Indian Army has also given the project's sanction order to 18 developing agencies to buy 35 sets of drone kill systems under the Make 2 scheme after the successful development of the prototype. This is to help the indigenous, anti-drone ecosystem grow. This project is only for MSMEs or new businesses. Drone Kill System is a hard kill anti-drone system that works against low radio cross-section drones or unmanned aerial systems. It is being made to work in all kinds of terrain, both day and night. DRDO's D4 drone system. According to DRDO, the D4 drone system can find, identify, and destroy different types of drones, including small hybrid UAVs, micro UAV, multi-rotor, and nano UAVs. It has a daytime and nighttime camera and can find and destroy drones within a 4 km radius. The anti-drone system can softly kill drones by jamming their communication links with RF jamming and anti-GNSS technologies. With the help of the laser-directed energy weapon, it can even make them completely useless. The D4 drone system would have noticed the attack in Jammu airbase. The system's goal is to find rogue drones that are likely to attack the most vulnerable areas. Multiple sensors and two different counterattacks are built into the system to get rid of the rogue drones. Indrajal. Green Robotics, which is based in Hyderabad, says it has designed and built India's first autonomous drone defense dome, called Indrajal. Each system will protect a large area of 1,000 to 2,000 square kilometers from threats like UAVs, incoming weapons, loitering munitions, and low RCS targets. It uses modern technologies like AI, and is able to find, assess, decide, act, and evolve on its own in real time. The systems can be very useful in Jammu and Kashmir because border regions such as Jammu and Kashmir might be an easy target for drone attacks conducted from Pakistan or from terrorists operating in the region. The Indian Air Force has also placed a $21.2 million order from Zen Technologies for, for counter UAV systems. This is the company's first major order in the anti-drone space. Although the details of the order were not divulged, the company stated that it would carry out the order in a 12-month time frame. Is India taking any action against Pakistan's unmanned combat aerial vehicle? India has different air defense systems to protect against combat UAVs. There are missile defense systems like Spider that can take on planes, helicopters, unmanned air vehicles, combat drones, and guided bombs. It protects fixed assets from the air and gives point and area defense to mobile forces in battle zones. Barak 8, also called LR SAM or MR SAM, is an Indo Israeli surface to air missile that can defend against any type of airborne threat, including aircraft, helicopters, anti ship missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and combat jets. Other systems like the OSA Air Defense Missile System, Quick Reaction Surface to Air Missile, and Strela 10 Low Altitude, Short Range Surface to Air Missile System, are some of the most advanced air defense systems that India uses to stop threats from Pakistan's combat drones. 
Moreover, India possesses S-400 missile defense systems that can intercept and destroy enemy aircraft, UAVs, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles. Armed drones, operate by the early destruction of the enemy's air defense systems, can breach the enemy's forward defenses and attack enemy's tactical infrastructure, such as headquarters and communication nodes, logistics units such as ammunition dumps, and geographical bottlenecks that force troops to concentrate, presenting lucrative targets. China is providing Pakistan with increasingly advanced drone systems to counter India, while India is beginning to recognize these threats and will be better equipped to deal with them in the coming years, having already begun the process. The Indian Army has recently incorporated new swarm drone systems for offensive and defensive operations into its mechanized forces. The swarm drone system, which is outfitted with cutting-edge technology, employs artificial intelligence to control multiple drones from a single station. The drones are pre-programmed to carry out a variety of missions, such as intelligence gathering, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Heron Mk2 The Indian Air Force and the Indian Army ordered 10 Heron Mk2 drones from IAI in early 2021, using emergency procurement powers given to the armed forces after the PLA crossed the line of actual control. Heron Mk2 is a version of the Heron drones that has been upgraded. The long-term goal is to arm the Indian Heron fleet with precision-guided weapons made in India. Since 2016, India and Israel have been talking about turning the IAF searcher and Heron drones into weapons as part of a top-secret program called Project Cheetah. And the plan to let India make Heron Mk2 drones under license is also being talked about. India is making weapons and platforms for the armed forces domestically would allow the defense industry to become self-sufficient, which would have strategic advantages since it would reduce the need for foreign currency, create skill sets and trained workforce, as well as contribute to the economy. However, it will undoubtedly take time for a nation to become completely self-sufficient in defense. For now, India must develop and equip itself with more effective methods of defense than its present defenses in order to counter the imminent drone threats from Pakistan. India needs strong laser weapons that can long-range intercept any flying target, 